So what is democratic school? I create a school that I want to do it as a microcosmos of democratic society. So what we've done, we do two major things. One, the school run by the democratic process that run by students, teachers, and uh, parents. And the second thing, in the democratic school, every student has a different learning plan. Every student chooses what to learn, how to learn, with whom to learn. It's a mixed ages uh, situation. And where everything is run personality. So I begin to do the first democratic schools in 87. Then I build another 30 schools. And then I go abroad and we build a networking of 45 countries that run democratic school. But to understand deeply the philosophy of the democratic school, we need to, sh to show you this presentation. You see, this represents all the knowledge that exists in the world. And you see these people? These people is us. What it mean? It means that everyone is different. Think what lucky us that every one of us is different. Think that we come, I was coming here and all of you were Yaakov. That was catastrophe. I think the main exciting situation in life that we are different. So what school done? School all over the world build this box. This box represents the school. In this box, uh, for example, we put a little bit mathematics, but most of the mathematics is inside the knowledge area. We have a little bit of history, but this box also say, please get inside the box. It's not interesting me what is your talent. It's not it's interesting me what is your motivation. Please get inside the box. Also you, inside the box. So that's the situation in most of the schools in the world. You cannot see the uniqueness of every child, every, but if you look carefully inside the box, and you put a glass. Sorry. Sir, what is this? Okay. If you look inside the box, carefully you find that it's not a box. It's a pyramid. It's not a box. It's a pyramid. What it's mean a pyramid? Inside the box, the children learn that some of them is uh, weak, mediocre, and excellent. And that's terrible to live all, all your life in a thinking that all the world is pyramid. Because in this situation, you begin to believe that people around you, you they are competent with you who will be in, in the upper level. And in this situation, you think that all the universe is a, a pyramid. So what is the pyramid? We find description what is pyramid. Pyramid is a empty circle that gets information from up and send it above. You know what is, why it's empty? Because no one can touch this information. It can only move down and down, and this is the pyramid. And pyramid is very difficult structure of organization. It cannot give the organization the ability to change. Because to change, you need to ask permission for someone above you. And also he need to ask permission from something above him. So it's very, it's un it cannot work in our world that change dramatically every minute. So see, this is, for example, a group in a pyramid. It's an empty a circle, they get someone above them. This group can be a group of a student, but it can be also a group of a teacher or principals. All the time someone above you think that he has the blue good thing, and he push this blue good thing to everyone. This is the education succeed. 
success. So in democratic education, we don't get this idea of the square. It's not why we don't get this idea, because the knowledge that we know is double himself all the time. So the square become unrelevant from moment to moment. So how we see the, our class, we say it's, it's a networking, that everyone find this strong area, the place that Ken Robinson call it the element, the place that your talent connect to your motivation, and then you can teach other people and peop other people can teach you. So, and in this situation, why to go to the building that call it a school? We can teach everywhere. And so what we've done in Israel, we say it's education city. It means that the whole city become big school. And students can use all the resources that exist inside the city. So in this point, we are talking about changing of paradigm. From paradigm of education 1.0, they're talking about the pyramid, to education 2.0, that is a networking. So if the regular school was like this, that someone, everyone think that the student is empty, that our, what we are doing is we think that every student have a different color. And he, the teacher need to help them to find this different college, color, the different talent. And in this situation, it's become the dance, that everyone begin to be a teacher and everyone is a student. How we do it? We build a school, a class. It's a, we call it a education 2.0 team. And in this class, and we go in traditional schools, and we have only two rules. The first rule, every student is a teacher. And the second rule, we have a common grade. In the regular school, every student has a grade. We say, let's make a common grades. And we build this tel tel uh, graph that we have training game, training game, training game. What is game? Game is exam. And what is training? All the students training to the game. So it's become like a social learning feedback. After the game, we, we achieve this, or this, and this. So this graph, think what happened in the class. The class uh, look about this graph, and they think together how to, to learn. Who will teach whom to achieve the, I, uh, the graph up? So here I stop, because here come the MOOC. And when the MOOC come, it's change everything. MOOC, as you know, is the massive open online courses. And it's the big university that begin to give courses in internet. And that's changed dramatically the situation because in the, the last two years, from one pi, uh, five million student, they jumped this year to 50 million student that learn by uh, MOOC. Why it's changing dramatically? It's, it's more dramatically than what we see because Harvard University and MIT say that in 2020 they will have a billion student in MOOC. So the MOOC also have the same problems like the regular school. When you take the MOOC like pyramid, everyone by his, uh, his computer, only 4% finish the MOOC. So the university, what they done, they make a meetups, a place that students meet together and learning the MOOC. In this situation, the success is 30%. 30% get certificate from the university. But what we done, we say, okay, in this situation, let's connect Education 2.0 to the MOOC and see what happened. We take a new a rule of professional, we call it a MOOCster, and MOOCster is something that know to know to, uh, to run education 2.0. So it make that every one become a teacher and a student. And we begin to run it in schools, high schools, universities, uh, uh, companies, banks, uh, high tech uh, companies, because 
Today, we are talking about learning. It's not about schools. It's about everywhere, because the world that changed dramatically need to learn. And in this situation, see what happened. We have finished the MOOC 83.5%, and that's a revolution. And that's a revolution. And what we are wanting to do now, we are doing two things. We make a MOOC hub networking global all over the world. And we make also a, a networking of MOOCster all over the world. And if you think about the future, and the future is that it, now it's going to jump from this year to 2002 to billion, t uh, billion student, so it's become also a big business. It's become a, a huge of changing in the world. So this is the Wired magazine. The Wired magazine say, you will see this magazine next week. It's the magazine that say what the big things that will happen in, 50, in uh, 2050. And not by luck, they choose what I uh, choose us, Education City, and what we are doing in the MOOC is the, of the, one of the big things. So thank you.